Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. It is a great day. I've been copying pictures, deleting pictures. I've been busy trying to clean out my computer. I get my new one tomorrow, so I kind of want to have this one cleaned out because I'm going to gift it to Seth and he's going to use it for school because it has a touch screen which after saving and copying pictures and deleting pictures I think I'm going to miss that feature I may continue to use this computer to store pictures in all right well tonight we are going to do Psalms 2 not real sure for sure what it's about last night we talked about the godly man and the un ungodly man so i'm not sure what we're talking about tonight but we will dive into psalms so i kind of just made this diving into psalms so that's what i'm going to call this series is diving into psalms Psalms to me is so comforting and it is just there's so many great things in it so many all right Facebook my lipstick is really red but I have um, I have red on today blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord uh, yeah. Psalms 3312. That's another Psalms. And I believe that our sorry. I'm running over my cord. I don't like that. I don't like running over my cords. I'm afraid I'm gonna cut them with my wheels. I'm afraid that our nation I'm afraid many in our nation have left God by the wayside. Maybe that's why we're going through some of the things that we're going through right now. God is trying to get our attention before it's too late. I feel like he is really pulling, trying to pull his children to him and get their attention. And... Uh, it's kind of a sad time, but it's kind of an exciting time, too, because we are experiencing the Great Awakening, the Great Spiritual Awakening, and at the same time, we're experiencing the Great Falling Away. Okay, well, let's jump into some prayer. I wish that my camera on the bottom was not yellow like that. I guess maybe my wall is kind of yellow. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God. We thank you for all the many things that you do for us, God. We thank you because you are on your throne and you are in control and there is nothing that you do not know, God. You have always known, you know right now, and you know what is to come. God, we thank you because you are everlasting. You are our everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and refuge, God. There is no God like you, and there is nothing too hard for you, God. You are miraculous and mighty and powerful, and you are the righteous judge. You will judge all unrighteousness, but you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God, and you want none to perish. You are so patient, God. If you were not so patient, then this world would have ended long ago. You are patient, God, and long-suffering because you want all to come to Jesus to be saved. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. 
God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God, to return, to return and to repent, God, to have their relationship reconciled and made as new. We pray, God, for all the disasters that are going on. Sorry, I've got to turn my fan on. We pray for all the disasters going on, God. We pray that you would be with these people, that you would meet their needs, whatever their needs are, God, that you would meet them, that if they need protection, you would provide protection. If they need food and water and shelter, God, that you would provide that, that people would come alongside them to help and they would see the love and compassion of Jesus and they would they would feel the arms of the hands and feet of Jesus. God, we pray for Afghanistan. We pray for protection for these people. We pray for whoever is supposed to get out to get out, God. We do, we do pray against an invasion. We do not want an invasion of terrorists into our country, God. So we just pray that they are being careful with who they bring here that they are already our citizens and they are people that helped our military God they do deserve citizenship here for putting their life on their line on the line in their own country God we pray for truth we pray for truth in all things that we have been told God we pray for only truth to rise above any of the lies that we have been told God we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones we just pray for peace comfort and strength for them and we pray for all the people that are sick we just pray God that you would heal their bodies give them strength restore their bodies to new God we just thank you for the people that you have been healing this week we thank you for healing we pray for uh, We pray for all the people that um, that need to know more and more about you, God. We just pray that they would seek you every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, we may not be on here for long because I think that Psalms 2 is pretty short. But I want to read some more... Um, about psalms i think i'm going to use this bookmark for my psalms isn't that a pretty bookmark we got those for mother's day i think i'll just read you this prayer on the back it's a mother's prayer thank you lord for bringing my children into my life help me guide them and teach them through example to lead lives of wisdom and strong loving faith. Please let them learn to serve you always in thought and deed and remind me Lord to always be there for my family as you are always there for me. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Mother plants the seeds of love is what that says. That's just, you know, as women and as men it was such a privilege for God to trust us with our children and teaching them and raising them and using his provision to take care of them what a privilege to be able to shape a young mind What a privilege. Okay, so we talked about the author, which was several people, mostly King David, but several different people. And we talked about the date. And so this is the background setting. The Psalms are derived from a variety of individual and corporate settings in Israel's history. And the superscriptions or headings of certain psalms 
identify their historical settings. For example, Psalm 3 is set during David's flight from his son Absalom. Ultimately, the Psalms became a part of Israel's worship in temple. Some of the Psalms undoubtedly were, were composed specifically for temple worship. So this is the purpose. The book of Psalms uniquely reflects individual responses to God's revelation of himself. Women can identify with many of these poets who poured out their hearts to God in prayers, longings, confessions, laments, and thanksgivings. The book of Psalms functioned as Israel's hymn book of worship songs, sometimes identified as the Psalter. Um, it says see charts, musical instruments of the Old Testament, hymns and songs associated with women. So the audience. The Psalms primarily addressed to the Lord of Israel played a significant role in the corporate life of Israel. They encompass a variety of positive and negative human experiences thus revealing that we can approach God with all the experiences of our lives. God hears the cries of suffering and sin, as well as the shouts of joy and gladness from his people. Literary characteristics. We may just do that tomorrow night. No, we'll go ahead and finish it, and then we'll do the themes and the outline tomorrow night, and we will be done with the the uh, where it talks about Psalms. The book of Psalms contains Hebrew poetry which is recognized by rhythm rather than rhyme. Primary characteristics of Hebrew poetry include parallelism, parallelism, meter and strophic arrangement. Among the many types of parallelism yeah. are syn synonymous in which the second line repeats the thought of the first line in slightly different words and is that antithetic in which the second line stands in contrast to the first or synthetic is in which the second line advances or completes the thought of the first Meter is determined by the number of accented syllables in a line of poetry. Strophic arrangement refers to the grouping of a psalm or psalms into stanzas by a recurring refrain. Okay, well that was quite informative. I did not know that about psalms. I don't get that much detail in my other Bible about psalms. Oh, it's over there. So let's move on to Psalms 2 and read it. And the heading for it is The Messiah's Triumph and Kingdom. And of course I don't have any study part about 1 and 2. Huh. Oh yes I do. That's 1. This is 2. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do the study part too in the bottom of my. This is a study Bible. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Wow, this is like what's going on right now. We have a lot of people that are plotting against Christians and uh, the nations are raging and the people are plotting a vain thing. They think they can be a better sustainer than God. So this is happening right now. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. You know, I've read that before because God, God laughs at the evil's plans because God knows 
that they are not going to be successful. God knows that Jesus wins in the end, and he knows that through Jesus we do too. So he sits in the heavens and laughs, laughs at their plans. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. That's Jesus. Jesus is our king. He is the true king. All these other kings are really not kings. Jesus is the true king. So he who sits in heavens shall laugh. And he is going to hold them in derision. Evil is not going to win. And evil will pay. Evil will pay for all the transgressions against God. Maybe not against humanity, but against God. They will pay. He will, he will pour out his wrath. It says he will speak to them in his wrath. And distress them in his deep displeasure because he is not pleased he is not pleased with this sinful world that he sees before him he is not pleased what God said was sin in the Old Testament is still sin in his eyes and he is the righteous judge just like he said he will speak to them in wrath, in his wrath. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. So he's talking about Jesus and Jesus' position in God's kingdom and what he has given Jesus. He is the king. He will declare the decree that he is his son and he has begotten him. And ask of him and he will give it the nations for his inheritance the ends of the earth for his possessions but in wrath again the things of this world are not going to survive if you are holding on to things of this world they are temporary and they are fleeting they are not going to survive they're not going to survive the wrath of God they're not going to survive the wrath of Jesus when he comes to destroy all evil in the battle of Armageddon. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. See, if everybody would just serve the Lord, if everybody would just invite Jesus into their heart, there would be no need for wrath. But God gives us all free will, and we have the free will to choose, either to accept his Son as our Savior or not to accept his Son as our Savior. And there are blessings with accepting his Son as our Savior, and there are great consequences for not. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are those who put their trust in him. There are blessings. There are blessings when we trust God. There are blessings when we trust Jesus. There are blessings when we trust the Holy Spirit. We will be blessed. People that are against God will not be blessed. There will be no blessing. There will only be wrath. The true in here it says that God 
God reigns upon the, the good and the evil. So there may be some good things that happen in their life, but they're temporary. They're temporary things that are not going to last. I would rather have an eternal home in heaven where there is no sickness, there is no death, there is no sadness, there is no evil, there is only love and joy and peace that is perfect, un uninterrupted, uh, un indescribable harmony and unity, and none of the things in this evil fallen world. I mean, I like, I, I don't love the world. I am, I realize that I am here for a plan and purpose of God, to fulfill that plan and purpose. That this world is not going to last forever. And this world is not my forever home. This behind me, this picture right here. Oops. Where's my finger? <laughs> it's in two different places. This picture right here. Right there. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Okay, this picture right there. You can see both. Uh, that is my forever home. And if you belong to Jesus, that is your forever home. So you're not ever going to have a forever home right here on this earth. Our forever home is in heaven. So now I'm going to read for you. I don't know where that paper clip came from. I'm going to read for you um, what the study part in my Bible says. This Bible's heavy and it's hurting my my wrist most likely connected with the enthronement ceremony of a new king contrasts the rebellion of earthly kings with the greatness and power of God the coronation of a new king in Israel apparently was accompanied by an outburst of unrest and rebellion on the part of nations subject to Israel Therefore, the king of Israel asserted his authority as the anointed of God. Anointed uh, literally means Messiah. Revolt against God's people is portrayed as rebellion against God. So Jesus is that king, that anointed, that Messiah. Israel thinks they have found, the rabbis think that they have found their Messiah because they don't realize that they, they crucified their Messiah. So they're still looking for their Messiah and they think they found him. And they're planning on bringing him and introducing him uh, to the Jewish people in September. So I'll look forward to seeing how this is going to go. But I want to read for you, in addition to this, something that me and my friend were talking about today. We are talking about all the things that are happening in the world and how... And I reminded her that if you read Matthew 24, everything that Jesus was talking about that would be happening in the end days is happening right now. So, we right now are in the present church age. That is what we're in. We are in the, oh, what do they call that? the dispensation of grace. We're in the grace period. We are in the present church age is what we're in. I believe that at the end of the present church age is the rapture. I'm not setting any dates. I have no idea. Only God knows that date. I have read that many times. 
only God knows. Jesus doesn't even know the date or the time that he will come back and get his church. But I believe that the rapture is next and then ensues the seven years of tribulation. And I know people, I read people's comments on videos, not my video, but on other people's. And they say that the vaccination is the mark of the beast. Well, I think that it is uh, not the mark of the beast, but it is conditioning people to take the mark of the beast easier because they are going to remember the conditioning of the masks. They're going to remember the conditioning of the vaccine. They're going to remember the conditioning of the stay six feet apart and all these rules and regulations that were put in place last year. They're going to remember that. The vaccine itself, I do not believe, is the mark of the beast. I believe people are going to know when they are asked to take the mark of the beast. And people that are Christians that deny the mark of the beast in the tribulation, they will be killed for that decision. But God will give them grace. And I believe that he'll give them peace and courage at that time. Because you do not want to take the mark of the beast. There is no coming back from that. So you do not want to do that. So let me read Matthew 24. I wasn't planning on doing that. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just takes me places and wants me to share things. Maybe nobody has read Matthew 24 and realized what Jesus is talking about and realized where we are. So then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, no one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So then I have like little... Um, little headings in this study Bible for different things. So the heading says, The Signs of the Times and the End of the Age. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. Now I just told you that Israel's rabbis say that they are meeting with their Messiah. Now listen to what Jesus says about this and do not fall for, do not believe anything that you hear like that because it's not true. And this is because, this is what Jesus said. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. And there are others. There are others in other countries that say that they are Jesus Christ. And they are, they're like living. They're like living on the earth. And that's not what Jesus said was going to happen. I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay, well that's the first thing. People saying that they are Christ, that's, that's happening. Wars and rumors of wars, that's happening right now. We're on the brink of a huge war. Maybe World War III. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now we're seeing that. We're seeing them rise up against each other. And there will be famines. There are famines now. There will be pestilences. There are pestilences. It's kind of what this disease is. It's a pestilence. 
It's a plague. And earthquakes in various places. Oh my goodness, we have earthquakes. We have several earthquakes every day. I don't track them all because there are so many. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Well, as Christians, we're not super popular. They're already calling us the haters because we stand behind the truth. And they have killed many Christians. Many Christians have been killed because they believe in Jesus. And then many will be offended, will betray one another. There, our government is wanting people to turn people in for not taking their vaccine or not wearing a mask or, you know, things like that. So they are setting us up to be betrayers. And we'll hate one another. Wow, I see a lot of hate. I see a lot of hate. Not within the church, but outside of the church, towards the church. And and towards each other. Evil evil has no loyalty. Evil has no loyalty. Evil has no love. They have no love or compassion. People that uh, do evil things, they have no loyalty. Uh, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. We have false prophets right now. I quit counting things. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Nobody, we have laws on the books, but a lot of them are not being followed. A lot of them are not, they're just not. So that is a part of lawlessness. When you have laws, but you're not going by those laws, nobody's paying for a penalty for breaking the law, then that's lawlessness. And the love of many will grow cold. There's not a lot of bro brotherly love out there. There's not. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, well the next part says the Great Tribulation. So this is going to talk about the Great Tribulation. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, that the abomination of desolation, I believe, is going to kick that rapture in. And then it's going to kick it into the tribulation. That's what I believe. That's what I read in the Bible. That's what I have learned. A lot of people say, no, we're rapturing at the end. But I believe in pre-trib. I do. Uh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Whoever reads and let him, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea... Flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, 
no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days are shortened. So we are the elect. We are the church of Jesus. We are the bride of Jesus. So God is going to shorten the days. Then if anyone says to you, look here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. So they, in deception, they are going to be doing miraculous things. And people are going to think that it's Jesus, but it is not. Because Jesus is not going to step foot on this earth until he comes back at the Battle of Armageddon. So if anybody tells you, oh, Jesus is in South Africa, Jesus is not in South Africa. If anybody says, Jesus is in Israel, Jesus, the Messiah, is not in Israel. Because he's telling his apostles right here that he is not, do not believe it. See, I have told you beforehand. He is telling us right now. Do not believe that. Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go out. That is not him. Or look, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. He is not in the inner rooms. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. So that is the tribulation. That is talking about the tribulation. Okay, the coming of the Son of Man, which are two different events. Two different events. Jesus is going to come first. He's not going to step foot. We're going to see him. He's going to tell us to come up. We're out of here. In the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, how fast does it take for your eye to twinkle? It is going to be fast. It is not going to be fast enough that you can ask Jesus to save you. That is why you need to get saved now. Now is the time of salvation. Not when you see Jesus in the clouds. Now. We must be saved now. Okay, the coming of the Son of Man. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so this is what's going to happen when Jesus comes to get his bride the parable of the fig tree now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. So these things are at our door. These things are at our door and could happen at any second. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means pass away. No one knows the day or hour, but that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of son of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. 
so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Because we don't know. We don't know. Jesus doesn't know. God is the only one that knows. And when God is ready, he will tell Jesus to come get his bride. And what's really funny is the right up here in my study part of this Bible it talks about the wise and the foolish virgins and I did that story one uh, one night and the bride did not know when the bridegroom would come I even did some research on it and read you know what the custom was and um, the bridegroom would come when he got ready. Him and his party would come. So no one in the bride's house knew when the bridegroom was coming. And he usually came in the middle of the night. But the bridegroom's father knew, just like God knows. God knows what day he will send Jesus to get his bride. We, as the bride, need to be ready. Okay, so the last part of this, ow, hmm, I hurt my hand. This Bible is heavy. I need a Bible holder for this one. The faithful servant and the evil servant. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming. Many people are saying, Where is Jesus? He should be here by now. I don't believe Jesus is coming. You know, this is what he's talking about. He has not delayed. It is God's plan and purpose for the day that God chooses. And, be, and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth so we need to be ready we need to be looking we need to be praying we need to be sharing the truths of God we need to be sharing the gospel of Jesus the most important thing for us right now, not wealth and fame and all that stuff, but loving our fellow man enough to know that if they are sinners, they are in a burning house and we need to tell them that it's on fire and we need to pull them out of the fire, whatever we have to do. You know, I had somebody tell me one time that they didn't want to share the gospel by scaring people you know about hell well hell is the truth you know we have to scare people sometimes to wake them up to the truth and hell is a real place and so is heaven so is heaven just like this picture that forever home if you accept Jesus as your Savior that forever home is yours all the rewards are waiting there there are no rewards here everything is temporary we have, we have some rewards. We have blessings here. But all of our rewards that last forever, that cannot be destroyed, 
are in heaven. And I'm not talking about gold statues. I'm talking about just the awesomeness of being able to look around heaven at the beauty. What a reward that will be. Just the reward of being reunited with people that I have not seen in years. Like my mom and my dad especially. I haven't seen him in a long time. And, you know, just other people that have died. Plus, just the, the pure joy of being in being able to see Jesus face to face after all this time those are much better rewards than what we have here the peace the love the joy the unity the harmony that will never be destroyed the no sickness no pain no hurt feelings no drama no nothing just joy just peace love and joy that's perfect all right well i believe that that is all i need to share right now and i was not planning on reading matthew 24 maybe someone needed to hear that maybe someone needed to see that jesus has already let us know what to look for and what we are going through right now is exactly what we are to look for. And nothing, there's nothing that is going on on this earth, under this earth, or above this earth that God does not know about. He is not wringing his hands going, oh my goodness, Oh my goodness, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that? Because he is in control and he is sovereign over all. He is creator of all. He is sustainer of all. And so he knows everything that's going on. And sometimes we don't understand, but his plans and purposes are perfect. Okay, how do we want to do the salvation message tonight? What have we talked about? We've talked about I'm sorry, my head itches. How about this? How about your ticket to heaven? We've talked about heaven. This is the thing. Maybe you think that you have relatives that are Christians. And that that includes you in heaven. But it does not. Everyone has to decide. Everyone has to decide. No one can get you into heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't... Um, you can't get there. There's one way. I lost my train of thought on that. There's one way to heaven... And I'm fixing to tell you about it. So this ticket admits one, one person. So may I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Because you could never afford to buy it. You couldn't. I couldn't afford to buy it. You couldn't afford to buy it. It's free, but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, He also wants you to live with Him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell. Hell is real. It's real. And you don't want to go there. Where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3 9. But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? 
God's word says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1, 8 Sin pollutes, it makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes, it separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23 in short, our sinfulness blocks our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So who paid for it? Wait, there's awesome news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that we might bring that he might bring us to God. First Peter three eighteen. When God laid on him the iniquity of sins of us all, Isaiah fifty three six, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark fifteen thirty four. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today. So you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life, your ticket to heaven. That's right, the Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1, 12. That is awesome. You can become a new person, born of God, to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So do you want it? It's no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 Just as man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife. God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. 1 John 5.12 If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So I'm going to give some space so that you can repeat this. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Remember that John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? Do you have that everlasting life? If you... 
said this prayer and accepted Jesus as your Savior, then this Jesus is your ticket to heaven. And this was done by Crossway.org. This is their track. But if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His one and only Son. And if you did accept Jesus, then please put your name in the comments. If you have anything to put in the comments, if you have something to add, hey, this, this, I know this about Psalm 2, or I know this about Psalm 1, or hey, when I studied Matthew 24, I learned this. Anything that you want to put in the comments, feel free to put in the comments, but especially if you got saved, I would like to pray for you by name, that God will give you strength every day. And if you want that strength that God has to give, then read his word every day and pray and praise his name. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Holy Spirit. Give them all the glory, honor, and praise that they deserve. Now, I am going to read uh, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And I'm going to get off of here because I need to go. I need to go feed my child. And my friend Josie did not join me today. I missed her. Somebody joined me, but I can't, like I said, it's a tiny little picture. And if they don't say anything, then I don't know who they are. I recognize Josie's picture because I've seen it a lot. Okay, so number 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's a little bit different um, in this Bible. I wonder if I can find a marker for numbers. Carlton BSM. Okay, I'll stick that in there. Because I'm going to keep using this study Bible because it has more information. But I may have a setup to where I don't have to hold it because it hurts my wrist. Okay, well let's pray again. Let's just do a general prayer for our country. Um, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I feel like in many places we have kicked God out. The schools, many places. The, um, the sports, many places we've kicked God out. So he can't be our God and our Lord if we kick him out of our lives. I believe in many lives God has been kicked out. Or maybe God has never even been taught in those uh, families and I think we have generation after generation after generation of people that have not been brought up to know who God is to know who Jesus is to know who the Holy Spirit is but it's never too late to get saved if that's you don't ever think that you are not worthy of God's love because he loves you he loves you so much. He does not love your sin if you're sinning against him. But he loves you. And he will He will draw you. And you can be saved by Jesus. All you have to do is be willing to accept. Alright, well I'm going to pray. God, we do pray for our country. I lift up our country to you. I lift up our leaders to you, God. I pray that they would seek your guidance and wisdom, that they would be on their knees, that they would be crying out to you, God, for help, because we need your help, God. There are so many things that are going on in our country that just are not right, God. 
just please, please forgive. Forgive the sins of our land, God. Forgive us when we sin against you. Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another, God. Let it only be you that we bow before, that we bring all of our glory, honor, and praise to, and none other, God. Give us, give us those pure hearts. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us where we fail you, God. I know we fail you often because we are human. But God, please forgive us. Just pray for the lost, God. I just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. I pray for the prodigals to see where they are and to come home. Come running home to you, God, to repent and to let you reconcile that relationship. God, there's just so much that is so wrong. There's so much hate in our country and in this world. There is so much division. God, please unify us. Unify us under the banner of love of Jesus. Help us to love each other with the love in G of Jesus and the compassion of Jesus. Help us to be the peacemakers. Help us, God, to shine the light of Jesus wherever we go, to be willing and boldly sharing your truths that we have learned in your word, and to also share the gospel of Jesus wherever we go to whoever will listen, God. Help give us that boldness, a boldness that we have never had before. Just help us to be filled with this boldness that we need, God. Help us to testify of your goodness. Help us to be more in your presence. And help us to use our testimony to encourage others. To show people that there is nothing too hard for you. To point them to all the miracles in the Bible that you have done. The miracles that you continue to do, God. Help people to see you for who you are. Help people to be drawn to your word, to be drawn to praying to you, to be drawn to praising you, God. And in Jesus' name, I pray again, God, pray for all the people that are sick. God, I praise you for the ones that you're healing. I pray that you will continue to give them strength and healing. God, we, I am so thankful for the provisions that you have given me this week. And I pray that you would uh, protect us, God. Protect us from this disease. Protect us from the things out there. Help us to stand strong for your truth. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I it has been over an hour. I usually don't stay on here that long. So I am going to bid you a, an awesome rest of your evening, an awesome tomorrow, which is Saturday. I will probably be sitting here copying pictures and deleting pictures all day. And um, much love. I got to go. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.